For a more in-depth discussion about this topic can be found in the Enigmas podcast. Link in the description below. Qin Shi Huang was the founder of the Qin Dynasty and was the first emperor of a unified China. Before Qin, China had multiple diverging states, where each of them had their calendars, writings, and road widths. He invented the title emperor after he had conquered all of the Chinese states and unified them. From 247 to 221 BC, he was regarded as Chang, King of Qin, and only from 221 BC until his death. He became the first Chinese emperor. Although Qin Shi Huang made many vital contributions that it left an eternal mark on subsequent Chinese history, he is not exactly remembered as a benevolent ruler who focused on the welfare of his subjects. Instead, he is often viewed as a tyrannical and authoritarian ruler by the later generations. Late in his life, he became fearful of death that he was obsessed in seeking immortality. According to the records of the Grand Historian written by Sima Qian during the Han Dynasty, the emperor was the eldest son of the Qin Prince Yiren. He later became King Zhuangzheng of Qin. Prince Yiren at that time was residing at the court of Zhao, serving as a hostage to guarantee the armistice between the Qin and Zhao states. The story goes that Prince Yiren had fallen in love with Lu Bu's mistress, who is a rich merchant from the state of Wei. With Lu's consent, Prince Yiren gained permission to marry his mistress, who then became known as Lady Zhao, named after the state. On the 18th of February, Lady Zhao gave birth to a child and given the name Zhao Chang. Prince Yiren eventually became King Zhuangzheng of Qin in 250 BC through Lu Bu's scheming. King Zhuangzheng only ruled for a short span of three years. In 246 BC. He was succeeded by his 13-year-old son. However, because of his young age, Lu Bu'ei acted as the regent prime minister. The state of the empire at that time was still in chaos, as it was still in a war with six other states. Only nine years later, in 235 BC, Qin Shi Huang assumed full power of the throne. Several attempts of assassinations were made to the king. The state of Yan made the first attempt, which is a small state, often seen as weak, and was frequently harassed by opposing states. Crown Prince Dan of Yan plotted an assassination attempt to get rid of King Chang, begging Jing Ke to fulfill his order. Jing Ke was accompanied by Qin Wu Yang in the plot. Each was supposed to present a gift to King Chang as a sign of willingness to surrender. A map of Du Kang and the severed head of Fan Wu Ji, who was a general from Qin, who betrayed his state. Fan Wu Ji voluntarily committed suicide to present his severed head to the king. Qin Wu Yang first tried to present the map case gift, but trembled in fear, unable to move closer to the king. Jing Ke, on the other hand, continued to advance towards the king, to avoid suspicion. He explained to the king about the state of his partner. He said, "My partner has never set eyes on the son of heaven." Jing Ke had to present both of the gifts by himself. Whilst Jing Ke was unrolling the map, a dagger was revealed. The king drew back, stood on his feet, but struggled to draw the sword to defend himself. At the time, other palace officials were not allowed to carry weapons. Jing Ke pursued the king. Attempting to stab him, but missed. King Chang managed to draw out his sword eventually, and cut Jing Ke's thigh. As the palace officials were drawing in closer to capture both Jing Ke and Qin Wu Yang, Jing Ke threw the dagger as a final resort. However, the dagger was stuck to one of the palace's columns, again missing his target. Jing Ke was suffering eight wounds from the king's sword by this time, and his attempt had failed. Both of them were executed shortly after.
to avoid the recurrence of the political chaos of the warring states ever to occur again, Qin Shi Huang and his Prime Minister Li Si completely abolished feudalism. The empire was then divided into 36 commanderies, later became more than 40. The whole of China was thus divided into administrative units, first commanderies, then counties, townships, and hundred family units. The system was different from the previous dynasties, which had loose alliances and federations. People could no longer be identified by their native region or former feudal state, but instead based on their merit. By standardizing the Chinese unit of measurements such as weight, measurement, the currency, and the length of the axles of carts, Qin Shi Huang and Li Si unified China economically. To improve trades between the provinces, the emperor developed an extensive network of roads and canals. The currencies of the different states were also standardized to the Banliang coin. Perhaps most importantly, the Chinese script, which is the Chinese style of writing, was unified. Under Li Si, the seal script of the state of Qin was standardized through removal of variant forms within the Qin script itself. This newly standardized script was then made official throughout all the conquered regions, thus doing away with all the regional scripts to form one language, one communication system for all of China. In terms of the country's philosophy, Jin Shi Huang followed the school of five elements which are earth, wood, metal, fire, and water. The previous royal house of Zhao had ruled by the power of fire associated with the color red. The new Qin dynasty must be governed by the next element on the list, which is water, represented by the color black. Consequently, Qin Shi Huang's birth element is water, which is in line with the cycle of the elements. Thus, the color black became the color for garments, flags, and pennants. While the previous warring states era was one of constant warfare, it was also considered the golden age of free thought. Qin Shi Huang eliminated the hundred schools of thought which incorporated Confucianism and other philosophies. After the unification of China, with all other schools of thought banned, legalism became the endorsed ideology of the Qin dynasty, which was a system that required the people to follow the laws or be punished accordingly. Beginning in 213 BC, at the instigation of Li Si to avoid scholars' comparisons of his reign with the past, Qin Shi Huang ordered most existing books to be burned except for those on astrology, agriculture, medicine, divination, and the history of the state of Qin. This would also serve the ongoing reformation of the writing system by removing examples of obsolete scripts. Owning the Book of Songs, or the classic of history, was to be punished especially severely. According to the later records of the Grand Historian, the following year, Qin Shi Huang had some 460 scholars buried alive for owning the forbidden books. The emperor's oldest son, Fu Su, criticized him for this act. Later in his life, Qin Shi Huang had a fear of death which led him on a quest to find a solution. He believed that there exists an elixir of life which would supposedly allow him to live forever. He was obsessed with acquiring immortality that he fell prey to many who offered him the supposed elixirs. There is also a legend of a mountain of immortality which is situated at Jifu Island called the Panglai Mountain, which he visited a total of three times looking for the elixir. He left a couple of stone inscriptions that are still visible to this day. The first inscription was made on his second visit, which says, Arrived at Fu and carved the stone. The third and the last time he visited the island was on 210 BC. He wrote, Came to Fu, saw an enormous stone, and shot one fish. In one case, he sent Shu Fu, a Jifu islander, with ships carrying hundreds of young men and women in search of the mystical Penglai Mountain. They were sent to find Anki Sheng, a 1,000-year-old magician whom Qin Shi Huang had supposedly met in his travels 
and who had invited him to seek him there. These people never returned, perhaps because they knew that if they returned without the promised elixir, they would surely be executed. Some speculate that the burning of the books had a connection to the emperor's quest to find the elixir. The scholars that were buried alive were those who had been unable to uncover the secrets of immortality. Since the pursuit of finding the elixir of life is supernatural, killing them was probably as a means of testing their abilities, where, if any of them had uncovered and practiced the secret of immortality, then they would surely come back to life. The emperor in his later years became so paranoid that he had workers build a series of tunnels and passageways to each of his palaces which he owned over 200 of them, with the reason that by traveling in the unseen, it would supposedly keep him safe from evil spirits. The terracotta army was also built to protect the emperor in the afterlife. In 211 BC, a giant meteor is said to have fallen in Dongjun in the lower reaches of the Yellow River. On it, an unknown person inscribed the words, The first emperor will die and his land will be divided. When the emperor heard of this, he sent an imperial secretary to investigate this prophecy. No one would confess to the deed, so all the people living nearby were put to death, and the stone was then pulverized. During his fifth tour of eastern China, the emperor became seriously ill after he arrived in Pingyuanjin. He died on 10th September 210 BC at the palace in Shakyu Prefecture about two months away by road from the capital Xianyang. The cause of Qin Shi Huang's death is still largely unknown. Reportedly, he died from Chinese alchemical elixir poisoning due to ingesting mercury pills made by his alchemists and court physicians, believing it to be an elixir of immortality. A possible contributing factor was illness due to the stress of running such a vast empire. This has been The Enigma. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like and share it with your friends. If you have a topic you'd like me to do in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell so you'd get notified as soon as there's a new episode. As usual, stay safe and have a great day.